One of the world's most famous saints is Francis of Assisi. He lived in 13th century Italy in a beautiful area in a village that's high up into the hills. Many people still go there to visit this beautiful place that reminds them of St. Francis and his good friend, St. Clair. Francis of Assisi came from a fairly well-off family. His father was a cloth merchant, and his father was really very concerned with doing well and hoping that his son did well in life and was comfortable and wealthy enough. Francis had a little bit of turmoil in his life. He was involved in fighting, but he came to realize that peacemaking is what's much more important. He was involved in the finer things and trying to have them in his life, but then he realized God is my truest treasure, and so he very consciously sought out being poor, so much so that he was destitutely poor. He reminds us that God is our truest treasure. He's not a expecting us, God isn't expecting us to be destitute, but God does want us to live a simple life, not grabbing for all we can get, but trying to be generous and content with what we have. Francis of Assisi was also somebody who saw the earmarks of God on all of God's creation, even in the animals. He was noted for being someone who was able to get along well, even with wild animals. He wasn't afraid of them. He was not at all self-protective. He gave himself to whatever people needed him to do. He was, in a way, a radical, meaning he was all the way. He was to the max with whatever he committed himself to by way of the virtues of the Christian life. He wasn't virtuous or good just when it looked good in the eyes of others. He wasn't holy and doing the right thing just when it felt comfortable. He did it even when it hurt. He embraced suffering, if need be, for the sake of living the Christian life. He had a great devotion to Jesus on the cross, who suffered for us. In fact, he so much wanted people to experience what it must have been like to be there with Jesus at Christmas, to be there with Jesus as he hung on the cross. And so he advanced the idea of having in our homes, in our churches, a little Christmas crash, or in our churches or on land that might be owned by the church, stations of the cross where we can walk the 14 stations and follow Christ on his way to the cross. He wanted people to imagine their closeness to Christ in the moments of Christ's life that meant a lot to him and should mean a lot to us. Christ being born to bring us his love, Christ dying for us to give us the way to heaven. Francis is also someone who was obedient. He was a real man of the church. He wanted to do whatever the church and its leaders needed him to do. He wasn't afraid to strike out on his own for what he believed in, but he always did it in a way that was kind and generous, loving and peaceful. So much did he follow Christ. So close was he to Christ. So much did he appreciate how much Christ had suffered for us that by the end of his life, he had miraculously reproduced on his body some of the wounds of Christ. He didn't cause that to happen. He received those wounds. It's called the sacred stigmata, sacred wounds. And in a lot of ways, Francis is vulnerable. He put himself in tough situations that following Christ might call him to be put into for the sake of doing the right thing. Vulnerable is a way of living that marks a follower of Christ and the crucified Christ. Being vulnerable, being open to whatever it takes to live for Christ. Francis, please help us to be vulnerable, generous, obedient, simple, peacemaking, 
people who appreciate everything about your creation. Help us to protect the environment and your creation and help us to have a personal relationship with you. This window, which shows Francis holding a beautiful little bird created by God, loved by Francis, is in memory of Mary M. O'Connor.